If you have Marcel Duchamp looking at found objects and you have Andy Warhol making copies of paintings, what does a sound artist do in, in our era in the 21st century? A lot of people ask me why my name is DJ Spooky and I kind of um, chuckle about the idea that in the 90s versus 2000s uh, music back then and the making uh, digital media based music was still kind of a, a fresh take on what was happening. So basically it's when you press play and there's nobody there. Um, spooky, right? You know, it's something that's like at the edge of like what's happening and the imagination and the, the sense that um, it's uncertain. I look, you know, took the name from a sort of a German concept of Geist, which means spirit or ghost. So basically when you press play and there's nobody there, you have to imagine that you're still hearing and seeing and experiencing all these things that are essentially at the edge of the possible, so that's spooky. DJing for me was kind of a hobby that sprawled out of control. I was never really planning on doing just music. It was mainly meant to be a component of my art. For me, music isn't really music. It's kind of like a reflection of a whole group of uh, issues that relate to art, information aesthetics, and the idea that design, uh, when I say design, I'm talking about graphics, uh, user interfaces, all these kinds of things that can go into creativity and the way creativity reflects back. Uh, music is not separate. It's combined with all that. I got into DJing mainly because my dad had collected records. He passed away when I was two. He was dean of Howard University's law school in the 60s and early 70s. And um, his record collection just sort of was hanging out, you know, in one of the rooms of our home. And um, I would listen to stuff and just chill and, you know, kind of read. And I liked to have records playing while I was reading. And I realized I was listening to records a lot because, I, well, I read a lot. And um, after a certain point, I just realized I had a lot of records and I kept going. But it wasn't meant to be like I was DJing. It was just like somebody who was listening to a lot of different styles. And it was kind of like a little bug that had got, had bit me like a mosquito bite that was still itching. It's amazing how some stuff can affect you when you're a kid and the way it evolves into other things later on. Um, I'd say listening to a lot of different styles of music as a kid has always kept my ears open. Right now, sampling is the global vernacular. I mean, so many kids, China, India, Russia, Japan, Brazil, you know, Canada, you name it, everybody's growing up with overload, which means that everybody's playing with fragments because you're not gonna watch the whole thing. You're not gonna read the whole thing. The search engine motif has collided with the sample motif. So a sample is a kind of a search byproduct. So we've moved away from the album into a post playlist kind of idea. So if everybody's listening to bits and pieces of songs, nobody's really listening to a full song through anymore. They're kind of surfing, they're going through social networks, they're going to collaborative responses. They're like, if you like this song, you like that song. I celebrate that, you know. So sampling was the first step towards that direction and now we're moving further into that frame. My first art project that got a lot of attention um, from a multimedia point of view was called Rebirth of a Nation. I took the elements of D.W. Griffith's original version of a film called Birth of a Nation from 1915 and remixed it and then presented it in a wide variety of contexts. But that wasn't my first art project, but it was one that I felt gave a good statement about nation state, identity, and some of the paradoxes of uh, ethnicity, race, class. So that's where I decided for part two of this kind of idea about looking at politics and perception, uh, definition of self, was Antarctica. And um, I was looking at this idea of climate change and what we call the Anthropocene era, which means that human impact on the planet has been so extensive that we've moved out of previous geological era, uh, you know, and now we are the people changing and, and manipulating the planet. Digital media art, music, and how people think of creativity. For me as an artist, going to Antarctica was kind of like, how do we think about this most remote place on Earth with no government, with no sense of geographic, specific uh, sense of governance, uh, except for science? And it's, it's the only place on Earth where literally there's no government. But science bases, uh, there's about 2,000 people on the entire continent. Um, so I was using, looking at and using this idea of culture and art in a vacuum, all puns intended. It's the only blank space on Earth. Um, and I took a studio and a backpack and went to all the main ice fields and did these kinds of recordings of the main ice field sense of transformation, geologic formation, weather patterns, stuff like that, and took the data and made music out of it. It's a string quartet. 
it's a book, and it's a museum show. But that's the point. I can take the data and software and flip it in all these different contexts. To me, it's the equivalent of saying, water is water, it's water. It just depends on what container you put it in. Hey, this is Paul Miller, AKA DJ Spooky. Subscribe to Thinker.